Hi, this is Les Levine, the self-proclaimed voice of truth and reason in Ohio sports. I love how sometimes coaches uh, portray themselves as rocket scientists. When Freddie Kitchens was asked why he went with the draw play on fourth and nine with over eight minutes left, or why he tried four consecutive pass plays on what started as first and goal from the four with a full complement of timeouts left. He looked at the questioner like the guy had three eyes. Freddie then took the blame when any junior high school kid knew what the right thing to do was. Here's the problem with taking the blame. Eventually, the higher-ups get to agree with you, and you get to be blamed for even more stuff. Give Kitchens some credit, though. The defensive backfield played well despite an abundance of injuries, but the offense, his baby, and John Dorsey's franchise quarterback and wide receiver didn't. Jim Ingram is here. He always plays well. More sports and Les Levine is on the air. Me personally, uh, as a team, as an offense, um, defensively, I want to commend those guys for doing uh, an incredible job. Uh, you're talking about a team that had three mental errors uh, when our goal was 10 or under. All right, I don't like to give a lot of details, but that's a, a fascinating stat from the standpoint of what they did and how they played together. Um, you know, we have total confidence in everybody that's on our team that they have the ability to step up and play well uh, whenever they're called upon. And I thought TJ, Eric, uh, Mitch, um, uh, who uh, Justin just had gotten here 24 hours prior to that, uh, and Jermaine, they did a great job in the back end of things. We're physical in the run game uh, and really didn't allow anything over, over their head, which they had been known to do before. Uh, offensively, uh, we're not quite there yet. We're going to continue to work and get better. Um, and that starts started today and making some corrections and things that we were doing uh, and things like that. And I think everybody's committed to doing that. Special teams was very solid last night. Uh, you were looking at one of the better special teams uh, in the National Football League. And I thought we, uh, we did a good job in that area. Made all of our kicks. Um, uh, the punter had a couple of off off kicks, but um, other than that, he came back and, and punted the ball pretty well. Uh, we're three games into a 16-game season, so that means we have 13 left. We're worried about Baltimore moving forward. Um, and, uh, you know, so we need to prepare for Baltimore this week uh, like it's the only game of the year because that's the only one that matters right now. From the worldwide headquarters of More Sports and Less Levine, it's a Monday, it's a brand new week. Good evening, everyone. Welcome once again to More Sports and Less Levine and Freddie Kitchens and Jim Ingram. All of us are here. Well, Freddie's not here. He's sort of, sort of here. He wasn't there last night. Yeah, yeah. No, he, was, he was there. Maybe that was part of the problem. Right. This portion of More Sports and Less Levine brought to you by the Ohio Lottery. Over $130,000 winners on uh, pick, Ohio Lottery pick games each and every month. All right. Lots to talk about tonight. Jim Ingram here. Um, Freddie Kitchens, what, he took the blame, which is the nice thing to do, whether yeah. it's his fault or not. But do you agree with me that the more blame you take, the more is given to you? Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I like how he said uh, the offense is not quite there yet. Not quite. I mean, <laughs> they're not even within right. miles of where and, they should and be. And better yet, when he was talking about the defensive backfield, he said, uh, and um, let me see, who's this guy here? Oh, Justin, who just yeah. came in. Well, that's the irony. The defense actually played really well, right. especially considering they were playing four guys almost off the street in right. the defensive backfield. And gave them a chance to win at the end. Gave them a chance to win, and then the offense looked like they had never even had a practice at some points during the game. All right, help me out here. What was he thinking on two occasions in the fourth quarter? 
one where it's fourth and nine at the 40, eight minutes left, full mm-hmm. complement of timeouts, and he he runs a draw play. What's what's weirder, the fact that he went for it or that he used a draw play to try to get it? It's a dead heat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I don't I have no idea why why he went for it. Probably I would say the play call was even worse than the decision to go for it because the play call doomed the play almost f- from the start and and you know So you, they had a chance until he called the play. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the, the, the yeah, the, uh, the 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 percentage of chance of success diminished completely when <laughs> when they saw the play that he ran. I mean, I, it was almost that was a really bizarre sequence. I mean, there, there was like that chance that play had no chance at all to, to survive to, to to do what it was designed to do. But you know what I was thinking when it happened? I thought maybe the, the the play clock went down and somebody just panicked and snapped the ball. I uh, yeah I I I, w- I would be incapable of trying to rationalize what went into that thought to run that play. All right, let's move it down. They get a turnover. They get a, 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 a an interception. Get the ball down. They got the help of a penalty on Dar- Donald, who, by the way, was tremendous last night. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they get the ball at the four-yard line. Plenty of time, plenty of timeouts. And they try to throw the ball on four consecutive plays, which yeah. is astounding. It is, especially the, it couldn't have worked out better for them. The whole thing was teed up for them perfectly. Right. First and goal at the four, you've got three timeouts left, and you've got virtually she could run any play you want to. Correct. And even if you run it and you don't make it, you call timeout. I mean, the clock, even though there was less than a minute to go, was no factor at all because of the None. three timeouts. And yet they made it so easy for the Rams to defend them by by virtually announcing before the play even started because there was no back there in the backfield with right. Mayfield that we're going to pass this ball on all if, four downs. If you're a Rams fan, you're saying, oh, I hope they're going to throw the ball four times here, but yeah, nobody's going to be that and the Rams silly plus, to do that. Plus, with Aaron Donald, one of your front guys, you can drop guys into the end zone where there's just all kinds of congestion right. in there and reducing the chances of Mayfield being able to find an open receiver. Here's, here's one of the differences. What Los Angeles did is... The, they set up this play all night long where the double reverse, yeah. that was set up in the first quarter. Yeah. Well. I didn't see the Browns setting up anything. <laughs> they, they needed to be set up. Yeah. But, yeah, it was just, it's, it's too bad because, you know, I thought uh, going into the game, I thought it was going to probably be a blowout with the high-powered offense the Rams have. And, right. you know, the Browns missing half their defense. And then, of course, the, the defense plays tremendously, certainly well enough to, to win – and then the offense, just whatever that was, it wasn't even, calling it an offense almost gives it a benefit of the doubt. Two one six five seven five zero four zero three is the number to call if you'd like to get your thoughts known here. Jim Ingram is with us. Let's talk about something good, like the fact that we're into the last week of the baseball season and uh, Cleveland Indians still alive, which I don't think <coughs> a month ago anybody would have believed. You know, almost at any point during the season, when the <coughs> when the latest wave of injuries swept. The, the, the roster, you would think there's no way they can get to the end of the season and still be in the playoffs. Right. And here they are with one week to go, and they're very much in the playoff picture. It's, it's, a, it's really an amazing thing whether they make it or not, the fact that they stayed in contention this long. You figured the rotation, each time it went through, you figured, okay, they got away with it and that's it, they're done. But yeah. they kept, nobody pitched yeah. poorly. And, and what's amazing is, you know, Savali and Plesek both coming up from, I think they both started in double A this year. Right. And Plutko's been up and down a couple of times. But I don't know what their combined number of starts was. It's probably over 30 <coughs> and are close to it. And, and there wasn't one where it was just a complete blowout because no. this was a young pitcher. And then you get the incredible story about Carlos Carrasco, who actually contributed yeah. And pitch very well. In fact, if Brad mm-hmm. Hand isn't your closer, Carrasco almost <laughs> yeah. by default yeah, has well, to the be. whole roster's like upside down, yeah. and yet it hasn't mattered. I mean, it has mattered, but, you know, Francona's been able to keep it together, and, and you know, they're with six games left, they have a chance to be a wild card You team. know, the wild card decision is going to hinge on the home run by Jose Ramirez. That would be fitting also, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he comes back for the last game and hits a grand slam. Yeah, let's take a look at the wild card race right now, how it stands. The Cleveland got a break last night with with uh, Tampa Bay losing. So Oakland has the lead by two uh, in the loss column and the regular column. Tampa Bay and the Indians tied exactly at 92 and 64. I was thinking this was six more games. Let's assume the Indians only wins four of them. 
that you win 96 games and may get shut out of the playoffs. I know that's pretty amazing. You know, it's it's. I, I said I've been saying this for most of this year. I think it's been Francona's best managing job yeah. ever, probably in that. All right, they play the White Sox starting tomorrow, three game series, all night games, and then Washington over the weekend. And the way it looks, uh, Jim, we checked it out. It looks like Max Max Scherzer will be pitching the final game. Yes, he would. Although I would say if they've got if their wild card situation is clinched by then, which it might be, um, although they they could still be going for the home field, they would probably prefer to pitch him in the if they could afford to lose that last game and right. still be in the wild card, they might save Scherzer for the wild card. All right, game. the Red Sox have one more game in Tampa. That's tonight. Then two against the Yankees. The Yankees still need that for home. They can still get home field advantage all yeah, the way through. Although they have to get old, they have to get ahead of Houston because Houston had the season series. If they tie, it goes yeah. to Houston. All right, there you go. Oakland A's, uh, not too much. The Angels and Seattle, four games against Seattle. So the race is on. Yeah, Oakland's one of those mystery teams in some ways because we don't see them a lot being West Coast teams, but it's really a good team, and and you know they, they've. They're, they're legitimate. It wouldn't surprise me at all if they won the if they won the wild yeah. card and the first uh, division series. Two one six five seven five zero four zero three. If you'd like to get in, talk to Jim Ingram or to me. You can do that. You can also email us during the show at reallesslevine at gmail dot com. Jim Ingram with us. Uh, the Ohio Lottery had over one hundred thirty thousand winners on Ohio Lottery pick games each and every month. Uh, with that amount of winning. Try pick three, pick four, or pick five for your chances to win up to $500, $5,000, or $50,000. That's twice a day from the Ohio Lottery. You can follow us on Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash more sports and less Levine with new content posted each and every day. We'll come on back with Jim uh, back in a moment. More sports and less Levine continues exclusively on cleveland.com. Presque Isle Downs and Casino now has sports betting. Use one of the 50 state-of-the-art Bet America kiosks to place your bet. Then watch your favorite games on our new HD televisions or visit our new sportsbook area only at Presque Isle Downs and Casino. Partners in Education program recognizes role model students and teachers from across Ohio. Nominations can now be done completely online. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Partners in Education. There you will find links to the nomination forms. Students, kindergarten through 12th grade, can be academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as a Teacher of the Month. The Ohio Lottery, Partners in Education, where stars shine. Uh, being critical of myself, I do wish I had given the ball to Nick one time, um, but uh, it didn't happen. But you know, uh, as as you move forward, I think, and I have to understand this. I know our coaches understand this, and I think our team understands this. That some of these situations, hell, they're new for me. You know, I understand that, but I also understand I'll get better from them, and I understand our team will get better from them. Our team hasn't been in that situation before, uh, so our team will get better. The next time that arises, we'll be better because of it. And the thing I want to stress to everyone is we're building this thing. As the season goes on, we want to be playing our best ball the further we get into the season. We want to play better this week than we did last week, and we did that. We want to play better next week than we did this week, and we'll do that. 
So, uh, you know, this is a continual climb uh, to where we want to go and to where we want to be as a team. And collectively, individually, and collectively, we will get there. There you have it from Freddie Kitchens uh, today. This portion of More Sports and Less Levine brought to you by Northeast Factory Direct with three great locations, east, west, and south. Um, that sounds like a guy who said some stuff after the game that he regretted <coughs> or maybe was – some PR guy said, hold on a minute, uh, we got to change your approach on that. Because that's not the way he sounded after the game. Yeah, I mean, there's a couple things to me on that. First of all, when you just – he basically threw himself under the bus after the game, saying, that I blew it, uh, right. terrible calls and everything. So that's – okay, so that's that game. What happens in Baltimore if the offense is bad again? I mean, you can't just repeat yourself. Say, no. I, 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 it was my fault I had made bad calls again. If you go 10 and 6, you can't say you had 10 great games and 6 really bad ones. Yeah, and then the other thing is, not once can I recall last year when he took over the play calling duties, did we have a situation like this where everyone was going, well, what was that? I mean, it was like the exact right. opposite. It was like everything he called was gold it turned into almost, it seemed like. And now the only thing that's changed, obviously, is he's now the head coach and he's calling the plays. And it makes you think that maybe that's a little bit too much. So, on his so what do you think? Last year he just threw caution to the wind, and whatever happened happened. And if he got the job, he got the job. Now that he's got it, he wants to keep it. Well, I don't think he thought too much about becoming the head coach last year when he was calling the plays. I just think he called the plays, and, and you know, uh, to me those those play calls last night were were so egregious that that it was almost like 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 no one like a, like panic calls or something. It was so at odds with the kind of play calling he did last year. The other one where he apparently didn't understand was the penalty that was called against Cleveland, but there was uh, the, the play can, if they accepted it, the play went on so that they could have challenged it. The the push out of bounds mm -hmm. and he he didn't respond to anything and set up a third and whatever instead of second and whatever. Yeah. Yeah, there there were a lot of big question marks on the offensive side of the ball and and most of them dealing with the, the play calling which which just was it was shocking how how uh, unpolished the offense was 216-575-0403 is the number to call i'll be on radio tomorrow on uh, 92.3 the fan i'll be in with andy baskin in for jeff phelps that'll be tomorrow from 10 until 2 the line of phone calls still jammed up at 92.3 the front the fan Last night well, to, last now. night's game was that was made for talk radio, <laughs> you know. Like, dude, there's just so much there that, uh, and then you know, the, the, and then I would imagine, you know, the fact that the coach <clears throat> offers no defense for it, other than to say I blew it, <laughs> that, that kind of fans the flames even and, more. And I'm just learning how to. I'm just learning yeah. new things. Well, uh, no, uh, you should. Yeah already know that yeah, if you're going to be yeah, the head coach. Yeah, you should know these things by the time you're the head you coach. You shouldn't become the head coach and say, okay, you get four downs. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, the field is 100 yards long. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah. It, it, it was it was actually somewhat alarming, the, 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 especially the, the end of that game. The thing was perfectly set up for them. You know, there was only 40 seconds left, but it didn't matter because you had three timeouts. You could right. have run anything you wanted to and stopped the clock if stopped it didn't work. Stopped the clock with no time left and, at and, all. And, and it just, they just kind of gave away those four plays. Al Michaels asked, as soon as they got to the, the four-yard line on the penalty, he said, uh, to, he asked Collins, would you go for two? He hadn't scored yet. Yeah. Would you have gone for two? If you're under the circumstances, you're would Freddie I Kitchens. Have? Yeah. You're playing the uh, Rams who are better than you are. Yeah. If they score a touchdown, you'd be down by one. What do you do? Uh, that's a tough one. I, I, I could see. I could argue either way. I, I might go for two though, just because of what you said. The, the other the Rams yeah, the are a better, better team, and you, you got a chance get the to win. You, know, you gain what is it, two or three yards, and then you win the game. Yeah. And if not, people, you would like to think would applaud the, you know, the uh, the call anyway. You know, I've said this all along that when Ben Roethlisberger retires, and I, I don't. I don't like to see him hurt. I like to see see him play out his career. But I always said that once he retires, that Pittsburgh would be in the same quarterback hell that the Browns have been in for 20 years. Yeah. And it looks looks like that. Well, they're own three, which is not a good yeah. reflection on his replacement. But, yeah, yeah, the Steelers haven't been well, – gosh, when was the last time they had a run of bad teams? You know, no, uh, not, not, not since Mike Tomlin has been there. Pre-Chuck yeah. Knoll, maybe. <laughs> Yeah. Or when he took over, Before, I guess. Before, I mean, Joe Green was... Uh, yeah. Hmm. 
Les Levine here for Northeast Factory Direct. I've been talking about them for quite some time. They've got three locations. Alex started the business in a garage in Lakewood selling one single dining room set and he had no overhead costs obviously so he's able to sell it at half the price. And now he figured out that's a pretty good business model so he's going to reward everybody. It's 20 years so he's going to have a 20 year garage sale at all three of those locations. You see them right there, West 140th Street in Cleveland, Lakeland Boulevard in Euclid, and uh, Freeway uh, Drive. That's in Macedonia. Or first, go to northeastfactorydirect.com. Northfield Park, your home for live and simulcast racing. Live racing Monday as well as uh, Wednesday, uh, Friday, and Saturday. Post time 6 p.m. for that, but they're open early at noon for simulcast action from all over the world at Northfield Park, where it's free admission, free parking every day. We'll come back in a moment. We'll talk to Mike Bassetta. We'll find out what you are thinking as well. More sports and less Levine continues exclusively on Cleveland.com. No other company or product can match the features, benefits, and warranty of an authentic Nature Stone floor. We had a horrible storm that flooded our basement. We had to take out that nasty, moldy carpet. And we never want to have to go through that again. That's when we called Nature Stone. And with Russell's Promise, our true unconditional warranty, you will never have to replace your basement flooring again. Get Nature Stone installed by the end of September and save up to half off. Schedule your free cost estimate easily online today at naturestone.com. It's not just a floor. Wow, it's Nature Stone. enough for a new Saturday morning ritual. That feels like a million. Play the newest instance from the Ohio Lottery. There are tastes we remember. Every smell brings the happiness of times gone by. Experience this every time you walk into Gallucci's Italian Foods. Whether you need lunch on the go, a catered party, or that perfect blend of wine, meats, and cheeses, Gallucci's has exactly what you're looking for. Straight from Mama's Kitchen for old world traditions or original experiences. From the tastes you remember to new flavors you'll never forget. Gallucci's is a tasty branch of your family tree. When it comes to selling you a mattress, most retailers are handing you a line. A long line of extra steps that drive up costs and create confusion. At the Original Mattress Factory, we simplify the mattress shopping experience by building mattresses and box springs in our own local factories and selling them direct to you. It's short, sweet, and simply makes sense. So experience more than just a mattress store. Experience an original, the Original Mattress Factory. No two teams are ever the same. Uh, you can you can bring the same team back, all right, with the same players, have played together for another year, um, and it won't be the same. Uh, and so I I knew there was going to be growing pains. We've got a lot of guys here that weren't here last year, so there's going to be growing pains. But we can the one thing we've done is we've continued to get better, and I want to con see that to continue to happen and uh, we'll be fine. Nobody's panicking. We're not panicking. Um, but we also understand the shortcomings that we've had. I understand the shortcomings that I've had, and I'm going to get better. Our team's going to get better, and it's always a continue. We, we started training camp with this mantra that we want to get better every day. We just want to live in the moment, be in the moment, and that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to be in the moment. Uh, as situations arise, we get better at those. We try to prepare ourselves for those moving forward. So we handle those situations good. Um, so it falls into that category. No two teams are ever the same. And uh, I, I mean, you're not going to pick up where you left off. Nobody does. Freddie Kitchens, do you think he has a suit? <laughs> um, maybe. This portion of More Sports and Less Levine brought to you by Tri-C. <coughs> Explore your interests and find a program that puts you on the path to a bright future. Let's join Mike Massetta from Nature Stone. Wow, it's Nature Stone. Hello, Mike. Hello, Lance. How are you tonight? I'm doing well. How about yourself? Oh, doing great. Thank you. 
I'm sort of, Jim Ingram and I are sort of rattled by uh, having the ball at the 40-yard line and uh, uh, fourth and eight or fourth and nine, and they ran a draw play. But we're more befuddled by having the ball first and goal at the one and not running the ball at all. <laughs> well, they did. They, they, I think that happened twice. That happened on the first series of the game, I believe, and then yeah. it happened in the fourth quarter, too. Neither, neither time they ran the ball. Yeah, for, um, uh, first quarter they could be feeling them out. There's no excuse for the uh, one at the end of the game. So, so just, you know, I, I, I don't agree with the head coach play caller, and I think that that really gets in the way of the responsibilities of one or the other. And, you know, to give you a perfect example, a lot of, a lot of offensive coordinators, they think that running a draw play on fourth and nine, you know, at the 40-yard line is a great idea. You know, and, 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 and they, you know, they, they, they have these, these wacky thoughts. They're offensive coordinators. They're not head coaches. They don't think in reality. They, don't, they, 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 they think outside of the box. And so, you know, Freddie doesn't have the inner voice they're going to be the hierarchy to stop him from doing that. So that the conversation is, you know, hey, I'm thinking about going for it on fourth to nine here. Okay, you know, the head coach then says, okay, what do you got? Okay, I'm running a, a, a draw play, you know, on, on, on fourth to nine, and the head coach says, okay, punt team, go punt. You know, because there's, there's no way that the head coach would allow that to happen. But when you're the head coach and you're the offensive coordinator, you lose that. And and, 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 I, and I, I think there's a lot of that going on right now. I think he's just he's trying to find himself in both roles because he's never done anything like this before. Yeah, and, it's, and it's, I, I agree it's with very, that. Very difficult to do. I agree with that. But Jim and I were also talking. You can't if you run a certain play on first down. You want to see how the defense reacts to it, and if you're worried about what play you're going to call, you miss that whole thing of, of what what the defense is doing when you might be able to take advantage of them. Oh, totally. I mean, and it's it's, it's ha probably happening with the uh, not when they don't throw the uh, the flag on the pass interference call. You know, he's got his head down in the uh, in, in in the sh in the in the, uh, the sheet for, for what play they're going to run next. Right. You so know, he's not concerned about all that other stuff that a head coach needs to be concerned with. You know, during the timeout, I don't know if you guys caught this. It was very interesting. There, there was a there was a timeout that was called. Uh, inside the, uh, uh, I believe they were on the eight-yard line going in for the touchdown to end the game. And during the timeout, it was a short timeout, so it was one of those 30-second timeouts. And they're, they're, they're standing on the sidelines, and Freddie Kitchens is there, and he's looking at his sheet. Baker Mayfield standing in front of him with, I believe, his hands on his hips, trying, you know, waiting for the play. And the other coaches, the offensive coaches, were behind him. Well, this is, this is the game. The game's on the line. You know, you, 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 Freddie stood there and looked at that sheet for almost the entire 30 seconds that he that he was there, that that the timeout was was being what was called. He never once looked up and, and, and you know and asked Baker to involve himself or had a play that you know hey if this is the one play that I'm going to run you know the Mike the Mike Shanahan uh, uh, you know uh, 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 John Elway roll to the right you know kind of play that that. This is the one play I would run in this situation. He was confused. And, he, and I don't think he knew what to do because it all happened so fast and he's trying to do two things at one time. Mike, you and make it, a great it's point. Very difficult. You make a great point. And Jim, I would think that when you're sitting there in February or March as a head coach, you're thinking, if I have one play to win a game, what's it going to be? And, and it, like Mike said, it's almost like Freddie was waiting for that clipboard to just jump out and give him a play to call. Yeah, I mean, he's describing a guy that's never coached and ran the offense at the same time, and that's, you know, he's looking for the play. Cole, I don't get too bothered by that. I mean, that's, you know, you call it, one of the reasons you call a timeout is to decide on the play and whether he should consult uh, Mayfield or not. I mean, he's a second-year quarterback, is not even quarterback. Yeah, but he's on the field and feels what's going on out there. Yeah, he does. But, I mean, uh, but but to me, the, 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 biggest, the biggest example of why this maybe isn't going to work is the play calling last year was after they made the change at midseason was terrific, and Freddie was calling those plays. And now this year the play calling has been horrendous, and Freddie's calling the plays. And the only thing that's changed is he's gone from just calling the plays to being the head coach and calling the plays. Right. And so it makes you, you know, think. Hey, Mike, and to Jim, it makes me wonder uh, if he even thought about it as the 
first through fourth down was going at the, inside the one yard line, if he even d had decided at that point whether he was going to go for one or two if he scores. If he, if he scores the touchdown, sure. he could go, you know, if you're the underdog, I think you take a chance at the, going for it at the, at the three yard line, as opposed to if you're a better team and you think you can out, outlast the other in a, 50, in a 12 minute period. I just wonder if Reddy, which yeah. way, if he had figured that out yet. There, there's, yeah, so it, that could have been something that he was thinking of. Uh, there could have been a lot of things that were, you know, that were going through uh, his mind. And what he unfortunately doesn't have is he doesn't have that that uh, head coach to be the voice of reason when things don't go his way or he needs, you know, assistance to uh, uh, um, uh so, so, someone to, to talk to or communicate with during the course of the game. Now, the only person that he can rely on is himself. And, and, and that's where it's, it's, it's going to be very difficult for somebody like Freddie to, to do what he's doing. It's not that he can't do what he's doing. He can, and we've seen success with it. I mean, I think Sean McVay does it in, in, uh, in L.A. I believe that Sean Payton still does that in New Orleans. So there are cases of, of coaches that do call their own plays and do run the offense. For the most part, I know that they have an offense coordinator. But when you're the guy that's calling the plays, you're running the offense. All right, quickly. You know? and so, Quickly, let's sorry, talk. Let's talk about the fact that the Cleveland Indians have given us a surprise bonus, a bonus week of baseball here, and you might get uh, Jose Ramirez back. Uh, that would make an interesting story. How, how about we we talked about it before? If Ho Jose Ramirez hits a, a, a home run to win a game, and uh, Carlos Carrasco saves it, that would be a pretty incredible story. <laughs> yeah, they absolutely would, and uh, and then Corey Kluber maybe maybe <laughs> comes back and. Uh, pitches a, a couple innings in the in the catching game for that. You know that that, that would be huge too. But man, what what a what a what a story! Uh, if he can come back from that that broken bone and 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 play well, I, I actually heard that they had set him those axe bats because they're they're better for his uh, his his that that bone around the hand area uh, to swing it. So we'll see what kind of bat he's swinging. When he does play, and, I, and I'm, I'm fairly certain he's going to play tomorrow. Yeah. I think he's going to be What's he done, in the Jim? What's he done? Missed, missed two months? Almost? Uh, I think it was August 25th, I think he went on the okay, injured uh, list. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Mike, we got to go. Uh, wow, it's Nature Stone. Let's hear it. <laughs> hey, wow, it's Nature Stone. Yep, that, you're the real Mike Massetta. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. All right, gentlemen. Thank Thanks, you very Mike. much. We'll talk to you soon, Mike Massetta from Nature Stone. Go to try-c.edu for more information about Tri-C and uh, the bright future you can have when you're put on the right path at Tri-C. Jim Ingram and I return in a moment. More Sports and Les Levine continues exclusively on Cleveland.com. As a kid growing up, my dream was to go to college, play baseball, and get a degree. Coming out of high school, I had two choices. I was accepted into a four-year university, but I decided to come to Tri-C after receiving a scholarship. I got my associate's degree at Tri-C. They transferred all my credits straight into Baldwin Wallace, so I started at Baldwin Wallace University as a junior. My name is Tyler Leonard, and I earned my first degree at Tri-C. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program recognizes role model students and teachers from across Ohio. Nominations can now be done completely online. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Partners in Education. There you will find links to the nomination forms. Students, kindergarten through 12th grade, can be academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as a Teacher of the Month. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine. It takes attention to detail. With your local Bryant dealer, you're getting more than just a technician. You're getting someone who pays attention to your needs and the little things that make a big difference. It takes a dealer you can rely on. And to keep your family cool this summer, let me show you how this works. It takes Bryant. Bryant, whatever it takes. And to keep your family comfortable, it takes Smiley One Heating and Cooling. Find them at 440-449-HEAT.
Birthdays so for today, Marty Schottenheimer, we're seeing on the left, Jack Pot, 1947. Ricky Davis, Matt Kemp, Joba Chamberlain from the uh, Midge game, right? Yeah. Joba Chamberlain? Yeah. Duke Johnson, former Brown. I remember way back when he played for the Browns. <coughs> Jack Pot, he originally was known as John Pot, wasn't he? Yes, it? yes, he was. And then they changed it halfway through his career. They did. He absolutely <laughs> did. You know, my favorite, I think my favorite name, and I've only used it when you're here, is Pop Fly, F L I G H. Oh, yeah, that's I think that's, that's my yeah, favorite name. Yeah. 216 575 0403 is the number to call. Jim and Connie at emails us. Says, Hi, Les. Uh, looking forward to the next four opponents the Browns play, the combined record of those teams. Ten and two. It's possible the Browns' record after seven could be one and six. Well, well they'd be much better than the one and six under Hugh, Hugh Jackson. Or the zero oh and six under Hugh Jackson. Right. <laughs> after seven games, they'd be zero oh and six. <laughs> <laughs> that would not be. That would not be good. Um, let me d just talk about the Indians for a little bit. Is Kipnis a goner for sure? Yes. Okay. Who's the second baseman next year? Uh, maybe Jose Ramirez. I mean, you know, there's a lot of options, one of them which would be put him at second, <clears throat> give uh, Yu Chang a shot in spring training to win the job, if not sign a, a, know, real, third a, baseman. a real third baseman, but, a, you know, a marginal guy that's a one-year contract guy. They got this kid Nolan Jones who's at Akron this year and uh, is, is really their number one prospect now. Um, he probably Power guy? Uh, he's like, I think he had 15 home runs this year, but he's got a high on base percentage, pretty good arm, left handed hitter, takes walks, and uh, he's probably going to be up here, maybe not the start of next year, but maybe at some point next year, depending on how that third base position Would you make uh, an offer to uh, <coughs> Yasiel Puig? Uh, no. You, make a one -year, you wouldn't make a one year offer? No, he's. Uh, the, the more you see of him, the more... <laughs> the more you see of him. Uh, let's just put it this way. I, I've never heard of a more apt nickname for a player than the wild horse for him because <laughs> he really is kind of wild. the great arm that doesn't necessarily know which base to be thrown to? Yeah, it's almost like he, he just picks it up and throws it. Right. Just to, I think but, he thinks... But it's get, always he, a good throw. He gets points for distance rather than accuracy. But, um, I mean, uh, the, he... he, he he does things like he'll run right over next to, to Mercado and stand next to him while he's catching a fly ball. Or Mercado, there was one play last Homestead where he, he ran into right center near the wall and would have made the catch. And, and, and uh, Puig ran over there just to be by him and kind of distracted Mercado and he missed the ball. And just you know, all kind of weird yeah, stuff. Yeah, you don't want to distract Mercado, who, by yeah. the way, has made some great plays but has also made some dopey plays. Well, to me, the, the, the biggest, he's had a terrific year, and I think he probably should get some rookie of the year votes. <clears throat> the thing that drives me crazy, though, is he, he bunts when he shouldn't bunt. Right. I mean, the other night they're playing the Tigers, the worst team in the major leagues or close to it, and it's the first inning, and Linder gets on, and he's bunting. I mean, you're playing a team that never wins, and you're playing for right. one run. He, I think he's a young player that thinks whenever there's a guy on, it's, it's, you're a good you team guy, on. you lay down a bunt. But the other thing is he's a terrible bunter. So when he tries <laughs> to bunt, he usually bunts it foul, so he's just starting off in an 0-1 hole. Yeah. Although for the uh, people who don't like an analytics that much and uh, velocity, and whatever whatever terms it is, uh, velocity of or launch angle, launch and, angle yeah. and all that stuff, Oh, a bunt, that's encouraging, except well, the, yeah, you say you can't people, bunt. Yeah, analytics people d really don't like bunting. You know what's interesting, and you deal more with the front office th than I do, but it's interesting that certain guys in the front office in midstream have changed to start to like that stuff. They used to hate it when a guy wouldn't move a guy over. They used yeah. to hate it. Um, they used to hate a lot of things. Now well, all of a sudden they yeah. like it. The first, when I, my first inclination, or uh, in, the first inkling to me that analytics was about to break big was when the Indians started making the argument that strikeouts are no worse than any other outs. Yeah, for a while they were adamant <coughs> how important it was yeah, to get the bat yeah. on the ball. When, when that, that even now in the analytics thing, they still don't care about strikeouts, but I don't know how that can be a defensible position because you can make an out and move a base runner. Sure. A strikeout, you, the base runner's not going anywhere. So that's that's strikeout to me is still the worst out I, there is. I expected them to be the only team that would not give in to the uh, shift and say, I don't care what those other people do. We're going to stay with the first baseman, second, short, and third. Yeah. But they've joined with everybody else. You know what's amazing on that on the shift? 
1948 is when Lou Boudreaux put the shift on in between games w uh, against Ted, w Ted Williams, and nobody else did a shift to 40 years later. Yeah, that was the only guy and the only team that did it for that one guy. You're right. It, it, shifting's become so prevalent now, though. It, it always amuses me, like when you're watching a game on TV and they have the, they'll show the infield and they'll have like a first base with an arrow thing, and they'll all be in their normal positions, right. but they still feel like they got to identify them because sometimes well, they, they aren't in their if usual If there's a ground positions. ball to one of them, they have to say they went 4-3, even <coughs> though it was in deep right center field. Yeah, yeah, and, and even the analytics part of rating defensive infielders, what if your shortstop is fielding balls in short right field? You know, that kind of skews the whole the yeah. whole grid for that. And so does a guy who can play a couple different positions on the infield, and they say, here's his batting average when he's a shortstop, here it is when he's second base, yeah. when that has nothing to do with hitting the baseball. No, but it, it would have something to do with their comfort level, a position that maybe they played more frequently yeah. and they're not thinking about their hitting as there much. There you go again, making a good point. <laughs> there you go again. I'll make a good point about Northeast Factory Direct. You've got three locations, east, west, as well as south. That's in uh, Macedonia right now. And uh, th all it is is three huge uh, bare-bone warehouses filled with some of the same stuff you're going to find at a number of stores. One significant difference. At Northeast Factory Direct, these items are priced at half the regular price and most, for the most part even lower than that. The bottom line is that nobody is going to touch their everyday savings or quality. If you want nice big ticket items and you want to pay more, then don't go to Northeast Factory Direct. If you want to save half or more, try any of those three locations or check it out first at northeastfactorydirect.com. Sokolowski's University Inn. I've been going there for 27 years now, almost every, almost every Thursday. It's uh, Cleveland's oldest owned and operated restaurant, the winner of the James Beard Foundation Award. Uh, that building is there in, in the back of the building. You've got the best view of downtown Cleveland. And uh, what a great place. Open 11 to 3, Monday through Friday, and Friday and Saturday nights for dinner. Mike and Bernie Sokolowski's University and the winner of the James Beard Foundation Award. We're going to come back in a moment. More Sports and Les Levine continues exclusively with Jim Ingram on Cleveland.com. No other company or product can match the features, benefits, and warranty of an authentic Nature Stone floor. I had an epoxy-based sand paint on my floor that deteriorated, and that's why I called Nature Stone. Why paint? It's expensive, it's ugly, and it doesn't last. Nature Stone is always affordable. It's beautiful, and with Russell's promise, our true unconditional warranty, you will never have to replace your garage floor again. Get Nature Stone installed by the end of September and save up to half off. It's not just a floor, wow, it's Nature Stone. When it comes to selling you a mattress, most retailers are handing you a line, a long line of extra steps that drive up costs and create confusion. At the Original Mattress Factory, we simplify the mattress shopping experience by building mattresses and box springs in our own local factories and selling them direct to you. It's short, sweet, and simply makes sense. So experience more than just a mattress store. Experience an original, the Original Mattress Factory. Downton Casino now has sports betting. Use one of the 50 state-of-the-art Bet America kiosks to place your bet. Then watch your favorite games on our new HD televisions or visit our new sportsbook area only at Presque Isle Downton Casino. Time for a how come quickie. How come instead of tackles they should call them holders? In Some the of the bronze, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, We're going to do quickies next uh, next segment, but would you, I hate to do this to John Patrick. I, I think I'm going to disqualify him. I, I don't think I want to use this one. Don't read it. Uh, read it to yourselves. Talk amongst your friends. Do you agree that I shouldn't do it? Uh, uh, what's your question? Uh, you should not say. I, I don't think I'm going to do it. I wouldn't do it. No. Okay. Yeah. John, I appreciate it, but I also hope you'll understand why I'm not using it. 
216-575-0403. You got time to get in another one before uh, next segment. 216-575-0403 is the number to call. Um, just theoretically in baseball, you, you and I disagreed on something. If, if you have a great pitcher and you tie for the wild card position, mm -hmm. your, your theory is use that great, assuming he's on full rest, use the great pitcher. I'm saying you want to win the whole thing. Maybe your second or third pitcher might be the guy to go to because you'll have your first and second guy if you, get to the, if you advance in the playoffs. I would defy you to find one manager that would th agree with you on that one. I mean, it's, Just get there. <coughs> I mean, that's, I, that's how I, bullpen games I see what you're it. saying, but, but uh, could you imagine if, if, if you, you started a lesser pitcher and not your ace in the wild card game and then got beaten the all in the wild card game, and then the media came in and you explained why you didn't start your best starter because we're saving him. It's the old Leo DeRocher line. I'll, I'm not worried about tomorrow. It might rain tomorrow. <laughs> so yeah, it's not I, insane in two days of rain. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know, you, to all me, right, so you, you're right you just again. Keep, you just keep using your best pitcher at that day. Well, that's that's how you. I I agree with that in reality, but that's how you get into trouble, like the Indians did with Kluber. Where you pitched him with full rest, and then you had to pitch him at the end with without full rest, and it cost him. But there's nothing. Apparently, Francona had no other option. Yeah. Well, I think the was it last year when they started him in the third game of the, yeah. the division series, and I think that was that was more a, an indication that he wasn't completely healthy. They never said that, right. but I think they wanted to give him an extra day or two rest, so they did that. You you mentioned before that Francona. This might be his best year of managing. I agree yeah, with that. Yeah. I, I, what I had said is give him the award, uh, American League uh, Manager of the Year, and then retire the award. Yeah, I, I, I would not disagree with that. I, I'll tell you, uh, I think probably uh, Aaron Boone's going to win it because they had a lot of injuries too. And More than Cleveland. Uh, yeah, I think so. And, and you know, they're, they're going to potentially have the most wins in the league. And, and Bob Melvin in Oakland's done a great job. And uh, maybe even... Uh, or, the great Rocco Baldelli, one of the ba best baseball names ever. <laughs> you can imagine when he was born and, and his father says to his wife, well, before they've named him, said, how about Rocco? <laughs> great moments in baseball history. <laughs> Rocco Baldelli. Well, it's he should have like, had a better career than he had. It's not like they made up a nickname for him <clears throat> as he started playing. No, as I mean, it's, 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 Rocco is, is the perfect name to precede Baldelli, I, I think, you know, but that's just me. That's just you. What do you know? Yeah, uh, but no, you're right. Uh, Frank Carter should win the most. I mean, how how, how could you manage any better when you you, you it, it isn't just the the volume of injuries they've had, it's to who they occurred with. Like the the first the five most important guys on the team all got injured and missed significant time. And we we talked about uh, about Kipnis not being here. You think there's going to be somebody that's going to pay him the kind of money he wants? Probably not. I think he probably has to take a one year. A one-year deal and and probably maybe even a make good in spring training kind of a deal. Wouldn't if that's the case, wouldn't he be interested in signing for maybe half price here? Uh, yeah, I mean, the scenario I would envision of him coming back here is he goes out and sees the market isn't that robust for him. The Indians are hemming and hawing about what, how they're going to handle second and or third, and they go back to him and say, all right, we'll we'll sign you for one year and seven million, and maybe he takes that. Seven million coming from another team would be probably welcome. Seven million from the team he made fourteen million for is, is a yeah. put down. But not having a job and having a job is also in the equation. But let's go to BP, who's standing by in Pepper Pike. BP, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you guys doing tonight? We're doing well. What's on your mind? Well, I'm just disappointed with the Browns' loss again. And, uh, you know, the offense is really disappointing. The defense held its own. And, you know, I thought they did pretty well. And uh, But, you know, I know we've had a ton of injuries. I mean, eight or nine starters are out. Because basically, and even Hollywood Higgins is considered a starter because, you know, they're basically playing a lot of three wide receiver sets. So I just, I just don't know what's going on with this offense. I mean, uh, I haven't heard your whole show, but I don't know what you guys have offered up. Well, like, what's the solution here besides, you know, getting these guys healthy? But it's more than that. It's like the scheme and the offense. What are your thoughts on the offense? Well, I think Jim said it best that with uh, Freddie Kitchens now calling the plays, he was f footloose. Well, Jim didn't say footloose and fancy free, but he, that's what he meant to say. Uh, but this year it, it seems more close to the vest. And it's not working as well, and the only difference is it's Freddie calling the plays as head coach instead of a uh, coordinator. 
I also think, you know, the offensive line is just not doing a good job at all. I mean, Baker Mayfield is a great, you know, passer. I mean, he's an accurate thrower. I mean, he's just not getting enough time. So yeah, I let think me, that's a big problem. Let me ask both of you. Do you remember Baker throwing off his back foot as much last year as he is now, this year? No, and I don't. but I don't remember him being pressured this much uh, last year either. Right. I think that they have a desperate need, in my opinion, for a, 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 a really good left or right tackle. I mean, they got to have one above average offensive lineman. Isn't, isn't it ir- uh, ironic that you had Joe Thomas for so many years and then when you have the right quarterback, you didn't have him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, but, I mean, well, if the draft were tomorrow, their first pick would have to be an offensive yeah. lineman. What's also ironic is that they traded Zeitler, and uh, he must have been very good because, you know, last year, the last eight games, Baker Mayfield was only sacked a handful of times. This year he's been, you know, pressured and hurried a lot. But And actually, Olivier Vernon's only got zero sacks, and then you look it up for Kansas City, Agba has got two and a half sacks, and he was very active in yesterday's game against the Ravens. I don't know if you saw any of that game. Yeah, I did. I watched most of it. Okay. Yeah. And by so the way, I think Kansas City's the team. I think Kansas City's the team to beat, by the way. Yeah, I mean, Kansas City is obviously very on their game, and it's, you know, it's still early, but I don't know. It's just something needs to change. I, I'm, I'm wondering, you know, if Todd Munkin may not be long for the Browns or something's going to happen. But this almost reminds me of last year when, you know, Hugh Jackson was in jeopardy. They made a big change, and then the Browns took off. I, I think something needs to be done to yeah, sort I, of I don't, propel this season. I don't see that happening. Do you, Jim? Uh, Freddie being part of it? Not you. No, no. I mean, you can't. You can't do I'm that. I'm not saying get rid of Freddie Kitchens. I'm saying maybe shake something up with Todd Munkin or something because this, like, I noticed that Freddie Kitchens is talking a lot with Ryan Lindley, the quarterbacks coach. They're close. They were both at Arizona right. together. You know, maybe something happens there. But the way this is going, this is not trending the right way at all. No, I agree with you totally. No question. BP, we got to go. Thanks so much for the call. Take care. All right. Uh, tomorrow night, uh, Bud Shaw will join us. The, the D-man, Dennis Maniloff, will be here on Wednesday. I'll be on Radio 92.3 The Fan tomorrow and Thursday, and uh, that'll be from 10 until 2. Uh, in for Jeff Phelps, I'll be in with uh, Andy Baskin. Northfield Park is your home for live and simulcast racing, live racing Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. Northfield Park, free admission, free parking every day. We'll come back. We'll get to some How Come Quickies and more. We'll finish up with uh, Jim Ingram exclusively on cleveland.com. No other company or product can match the features, benefits, and warranty of an authentic Nature Stone floor. We had a horrible storm that flooded our basement. We had to take out that nasty, moldy carpet. And we never want to have to go through that again. That's when we called Nature Stone. And with Russell's promise, our true unconditional warranty, you will never have to replace your basement flooring again. Get Nature Stone installed by the end of September and save up to half off. Schedule your free cost estimate easily online today at naturestone.com. It's not just a floor. Wow, it's Nature Stone. There are tastes we remember. Every smell brings the happiness of times gone by. Experience this every time you walk into Gallucci's Italian Foods. Whether you need lunch on the go, a catered party, or that perfect blend of wine, meats, and cheeses, Gallucci's has exactly what you're looking for. Straight from Mama's Kitchen, for old world traditions or original experiences. From the tastes you remember to new flavors you'll never forget, Gallucci's is a tasty branch of your family tree. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program recognizes role model students and teachers from across Ohio. Nominations can now be done completely online. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Partners in Education. There you will find links to the nomination forms. Students, kindergarten through 12th grade, can be academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as a Teacher of the Month. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine. All right, time for some how come quickies that are readable. John, uh, John Patrick, I apologize, but I, I got to gotta make this tough decisions at the top here, Jim. That's on why more you sports get the big bucks. Than, that's why I get the big bucks, and that's why it's still called more sports and less than me. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go with this safe one that uh, comes in from Big Ed. How come I thought talk was cheap until I saw my family's latest cell phone bill? How come it takes me more than three weeks to prepare an impromptu speech? <laughs> Not bad. Yeah, that's all right. Mr. Gullible comes in with a late entry. 
How come last year when I couldn't afford my electric bills, it was really a dark time for me? <laughs> <laughs> and finally, how come this is uh, this has a lot to do with utility bills? How come when my landlord said he wanted to talk to me about my high heating bills, I said, "Hey, my door's always open." <laughs> You can't beat good utility bills humor. <laughs> There's not enough of that these days. <laughs> you should do a whole Base show on that. Baseball teams need utility <clears throat> players. We need utility bills. You should do like a whole show of How Come Quickies on various topics. You All know, right, I should you, keep them in. You, you, give, you give everyone. Here's one about space, everybody. <laughs> you could have visual aids and things. You know, you could I should have kept, over the years, I should have kept all the quickies in yeah, there. Yeah, you could have had a, a, book. a book on them, yeah. What am I thinking? Is there still time? <laughs> How come you didn't keep your How Come Quickies? <laughs> <laughs> All right, you got about two minutes. What do you got? What's on your mind for two? You got two minutes. It's the two minute warning. Two minute warning. What do you got? Um, well, I will say this. If, 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 if the Ravens game, and I watched the Ravens yesterday too, the Chiefs really, really looked good. I thought there were times when the Ravens looked really good too they in did. that game. The Chiefs looked terrific and the quarterback <clears throat> if the surprised Browns, me. If the Browns offense is, is, is as directionless as it looked last night, Freddie can't come out and say, it's my fault, I, I, I'm making bad calls. I mean, that, that, you get one of those and he just used up that card. You can't. You, there's got to be something else going on. You get one what? One one where you just say I, I blew it. It was my fault. I, I I made a bunch of bad calls. You can't come back the next week and say I made a, 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 again. I made a bunch of no, bad calls. No, and then if you answer, I don't. I don't. Under, I don't know what the relationship is with Jimmy Haslam. I have an idea what it is with uh, John Dorsey, and Dorsey's going to say, "What were you thinking on fourth and first and f goal at the four? I'm sure mm -hmm. he has to answer. But when the owner asked that question, it's it's a tough answer. Yeah, especially for a guy who was like the golden boy last year, right. now just three games into this season, and everyone's going, "Wait a minute, this this is not anything like we imagined it should be." I remember talking to Chris Palmer when he was uh, the coach here, first two years of the franchise when they came back, and there there was a situation in the game. I don't remember what it was, but he had a chance to go for it or do something unusual. Um, which could have put him in position to win the game. And he chose to take the safe route as if he was playing to get to the Super Bowl. And I asked him, why did you go with that, that play? He said, well, it would have been tough for What would I have said to my owner if he asked why we lost by 24 points? And the answer is the same thing you'd say if, is why if you lost by one point. A loss is a loss. Yeah. What do you care if you've got Randy, if you've got... Uh, uh, Al Lerner is your man as as your owner. He's going to ask the question, but the 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 amount of the loss shouldn't have anything to do with the play call. It shouldn't. And as a yeah, as yeah. an expansion team. Yeah, I mean it, it shouldn't. You're right. But so many decisions in sports at all levels are based on can I defend this if it doesn't work? Well, that's exactly what happened. And and, and that 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 infiltrates I think all all levels of sports. Yeah, but sports. my guess is if you're an expansion team, the owner would like to see you have a devil may care attitude in certain situations in certain games. <clears throat> I would agree with that, although I, I, I would imagine that they would like to mix in a win now and then <laughs> too, so that, that kind of enters into it. Well, then they'd expect them to always win. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Al Lerner told me before the first season, I said, what do, you, what do you think your record's going to be? He says, I'd rather not let you know because that gives a safety net to the coach. If he says, as an expansion team, four games, so, all right, you win three. Hey, that's pretty close. Yeah. And he didn't want to have a safety net for his, his, yeah. uh, manager, his uh, coach or his players. Well, most, most owners are with their guy, win or tie, <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> exactly. All right, we got to go. Thanks to Jim Ingram. Does a great job, as always, tomorrow night. Bud Shaw, who mostly does a good job, right? Yes. Mostly. That's, that's all we ask for around here. <laughs> mostly produce. But we like a win every once in a while. And uh, the D-man, Dennis Manloff, will be with us on, th on uh, Wednesday. I'll be on 92.3 The Fan 10 until 2 tomorrow and uh, Wednesday. Of all the shows I've ever done, this was the most recent. <laughs>